Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We got a new article from Bloomberg that has been very interesting to the Palantir community over the past uh, really 24 hours when this article came out. And the goal in today's video is to go through this article and get a little bit more of a deeper understanding for what the defense market is looking like in the context of generative AI applications. The title of the article, the US military is taking generative AI out for a spin. We're gonna read through the article, kind of talk about what it means. And then really, what is the relationship that this has to Palantir? Palantir obviously introduced AIP for defense. I did a reaction to that video back in April, and it was one of the most interesting products. I mean, the product went viral on Twitter. Elon Musk responded to it. It was one of those products where you see the use case of an LLM on the battlefield, and you just try to think of all of the applications and how that can truly revolutionize warfare and what that means for a country like the United States to be able to continue to maintain its dominance over Russia and China. So let's get through the article and talk then a little bit about what this means for Palantir. Matthew Stromenheimer is sounding a little bit giddy. The U.S. Air Force colonel has been running database exercises inside the U.S. Defense Department for years. But for the first time, he tried a large language model to perform a military task. It was highly successful. It was very fast, he tells me. We are learning that this is possible for us to do. LLMs are trained on huge swaths of internet data to help artificial intelligence predict and generate human-like responses to user prompts. They are what power generative AI tools such as OpenAI's ChatGPT or Google's Bard. Five of these are being put through the through the paces as a part of a broader series of Defense Department experiments that are focused on developing data integration and digital platforms across the military. The exercises are run by the Pentagon's Digital and AI Office on, and Military Top Brass with participation from U.S. allies. The Pentagon won't say which LLMs are in testing, though Scale AI, a San Francisco-based startup, says its new Donovan product is among the LLM platforms being tested. Now, Scale AI is a private company that's valued about at 7.4 billion dollars on the private market they recently came out with some aip like de for defense competitors to palantir the ceo is 25 years old he talks kind of in the same way that palantir's alex carp talks when it comes to branding the product the, you know the philosophy of the west democracy all that stuff so it's very interesting that they're being used uh here and i would imagine that if they're one of the llms that are being tested in this Palantir is also probably one of the LLMs being tested along with maybe something from Microsoft, etc. And so they're putting a variety of different things to the test to see which one is the best, which one actually ingests the data in the best way. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think Palantir hopefully has an edge against a lot of these other LLMs being tested. The use of LLMs would represent a major shift to the military where so little is digitized or connected. Currently, making a request for information to a specific part of the military can take several staffers hours or even days to complete as they jump on phones or rush to make slide decks. In one test, one of the AI tools completed a request in 10 minutes. That doesn't mean it's ready for prime time right now. We we just did it live. We did it with secret level data, he says of the experiment, adding it could be deployed by, to the military in the very near term. Schrumheimer also says that, the, that they have fed the models with classified operational information to inform sensitive questions. The long-term aim of such exercises is to update the U.S. warhorse so that it can be in, it can use AI-enabled data in, in decision-making, sensors, and ultimately firepower. Dozens of companies, including Palantir and Andrel Industries, are developing AI-based decision platforms for the Pentagon. Microsoft has announced users of the Azure Government Cloud can access AI models from OpenAI. And for now, the U.S. military team will experiment by asking LLMs for planning the military's response to an escalating global crisis that starts small and then shifts into the Indo. Pacific region. So what's very interesting about this article, and then later in the article, they go on to talk about a potential scenario with if China, if a war in um, China and Taiwan broke out, what would you do? And the model tries to like give them some answers and some simulations on what's the best course of action to take right through a predictive simulation of what, you know, if this happened, what, what should the United States be able to do? So the interesting thing here is that they're feeding fake data right now in a hypothetical scenario into these models. And the goal of these models is to come up with hopefully the best responses for uh, the Department of Defense so they can see which model is giving the best response. And as a result of the best response, which one would give a real response that could give real insights and real data um, w when something does actually happen. And that's probably going to you know, influence their decision on who to go with. Now, the interesting thing here to understand in the context of LLMs and uh, what it means for Palantir and its application of this is that the data is the data and the models are commodities, meaning the, the data is not a commodity. But in this case, because they're feeding the same data to five different LLMs, it is a commodity, right? So the goal of an LLM is to be trained on proprietary data. That's what stops hallucinations. That's what creates it to have more real time information. But if you're, if you're testing five competitors and you're feeding all of them the same data, the data becomes a commodity. In, in fact, this case, this data is fake, right? They're planning some hypothetical scenario. Now, so then what becomes the differentiating value factor, the proposition, to, to, to go with a Palantir over a scale or a Microsoft, etc.? 
Well, if the data is all the same and the models are agnostic, then what matters is the end-to-end -end tooling of the infrastructure containing the large language models. And so this is where Palantir, hopefully, one could argue, has a, th has a, has a uh, differentiated moat in the context of all these other LLMs. What we've seen over the past couple of years with Palantir is that they have a product that is, is fueled through taking silos of data and putting them together in one place, which is the ontology. And that ontology, they've worked really a decade to be able to build, to be so sophisticated enough to, to ingest your data within a pipeline and then garner you insights within you know minutes or seconds from that data because it comes through that ontology. What I believe is the differentiating factor for the DoD to decide they want to go with Palantir's AIP for defense over the Donovan product is for them to see what end-to-end -end infrastructure in terms of implementing the tooling for the LLM to be trained in the first place has the least amount of hallucinations, which is just like making up random stuff, has the most amount of confidential security, so like nothing leaks, it makes sense, you can trust it, has the best user interface for actually being able to engage with the product in real time, and then which one can come up with the best answers. And the best answers is not just a result of the data, not just a result of like the LLM, it's a result of the tooling and the infrastructure to be able to supply the data to be able to get to a result. And that is what Palantir is saying is the reason for why they're getting so many customers coming to the door in the words of, of Alex Karp in terms of inbound demand, because that tooling, that infrastructure is really hard to build. Databricks just bought a company for $1.3 billion to be able to help them build that AI infrastructure tooling in order to sell to enterprises. That tooling has to be confident, it has to be secure, it has to value privacy and data ethics, and, and, and more importantly, it has to be able to actually have the technology to use all of that to then give a response that's meaningful to the client, whether it's an enterprise or a, a defense contract or, or the DOD, right, as a defense contractor. So this is where I think the U.S. starting to use generative AI applications in the military highlights two things for Palantir. Number one, this market is only going to keep growing. U.S. defense spending on AI has gone up uh, to about like $1.5 I think I saw The Economist put up a chart of that the other day. VCs are starting to spend close to $30 billion a year on defense technology, and they're spending defense technology because they believe there's a market for those defense tech startups to be able to go capture uh, in, in, in terms of the software space. So that market is growing. The United States is starting to recognize that they, they want to maintain their competitive edge over Russia and China, given we're in this gold rush of AI and how it can be used to completely operationalize every industry. And so the reason the DOD is testing five different products is because they're trying to see what is the best way to procure an actual AIP for defense strategy so that when things do go south, which the, you know, the United States obviously thinks things are not going to be the best over the next 10, 20 years, uh, what can we have that gives most real-time sensitive data immediately and creates the best analytics and predictive simulations for us to be able to take action? Palantir... And a version of their AIP for Defense, I'm assuming, is being used in Ukraine right now. And so I, I think they already have a leg up in terms of their stuff is battle tested. So the question then becomes, will it be good enough for the DOD to be able to use it, given Palantir's ties with the government? I think outside of any, you know, colossal problems with it, which you would argue because they were able to ship it so quickly, the reason they were able to ship AIP for Defense within a matter of months is because they were building the back-end architecture that it takes to build a product like that on the front end. And so they've been ready to go. And all they need to do is slap a user face onto it and then boom. Uh, you have a shot to actually start getting it out into the market. And they hosted an entire conference for that reason, that they were able to get it out into the market immediately. So my assumption is that the U.S. working with generative AI should lead to a company like Palantir being able to be the winner of a decent amount of that spend that's going to go to generative AI. Uh, maybe the U.S. wants to diversify how they spend. You know, we'll see kind of what it looks like from there. But ultimately, they have to go with something that is the most secure and technologically advanced. And one could argue that Palantir has the best AI infrastructure to be able to do it. And if the DOD goes with them for AIP for defense, it, it seems very likely that other commercial clients are, their, their product is just so better than everyone else's in that case, that we should be able to see an increase in customer count from commercial uh, just because, you know, if the DOD is using them, hopefully more commercial clients are using them as well. So those are my thoughts. The U.S. is taking out generative AI for a spin. And let's see if Palantir is part of that process to ultimately get those deals done. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Please follow on Twitter. Uh, I'm also on threads now, at It's Amit if you want to follow on threads. Uh, please subscribe to dailypalantir.com slash subscribe, free email newsletter every single day. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I'll see you in the next one.